Intel's 12th generation chips have really set the cat amongst the pigeons in the CPU wars, not only with its new big dot little performance and efficiency cores in a similar way to Apple's M1 chips, but also the effect of the new Z690 chipset featuring both PCIe 5 and DDR5 memory on a mainstream PC platform. Our resident audio PC expert Pete Gardner has spent the last few weeks with the new range and has tested them all using a door bench test, which individually measures both DSP and virtual instrument performance. Today we can show you not just how well the new range of chips perform compared to each other, but also the past generation of Intel's and AMD Zen 3 based 5000 series models. Pete has been using the standard door bench test to measure performance. These tests are run inside of a Reaper session and measure separately virtual instrument and DSP plugin performance. Virtual instruments are measured by polyphony, which is the number of notes played back simultaneously at various buffer sizes using instances of contact six. DSP performance is measured by seeing how many instances of the same DSP plugin can be played back. Both tests continue until the point that the processor is overloaded and the audio stream starts to break up and have errors and glitches in it. All of the testing has been done under Windows 11 with all available updates and patches implemented as of November 2nd with memory clocked one level above stock speed for the platform. The Intel 12th gen chips have all been measured using 5200 MHz DDR5 RAM. So onto the graphs and DSP wise, we can see that there is a huge jump in performance from the equivalent 11th gen i5, i7 and i9 models, around a 50% gain on the i7 and over an 80% gain on the i9. Even the modest i5-12600K is now on par with both the 8-core AMD 5800X and the 12-core Intel 10920X. The i7-12700K comes in around 20% higher than the i5, just below the 12-core AMD 5900X, but still about 15-20% to below the i9-12900K with the 16-core AMD 5950X holding the top spot. Now, if we switch over to the virtual instrument chart, then it gets flipped on its head as the Intels and their DDR5 memory really start making waves with clear winds across the range. The 12th gen i5-12600K wins by over 40% at higher buffer sizes from the 8-core 5800X, which it was roughly on par with in the DSP test. Even the i7-12700K is nudging past the 5950X at everything but the smallest buffer. That just leaves the 12900K way out in front, toppling even the costly 18-core 10980X at the larger buffers. So, should everyone just go out and get a 12900K-based system? Well, unless you're a composer who doesn't need more than 64 gig of RAM right now, then no. There are a few considerations to think about, but we'll come back to them in a second, because in a typical usage case, you're going to need far more DSP power than instruments. At the extremes, a mix engineer might be 100% DSP, but an orchestral composer will be needing mostly instrument power. There are some significant plus points to the Intel chipset though. Even though there aren't currently any PCIe 5 devices available, it is ready for that next generation. And most motherboards seem to support four M2 SSD drives. So it's easily expandable with extremely fast storage. Even if in our testing, you tend not to see too much of a difference on library load times between different types of SSD. Back to those other considerations, the Intel chips do run considerably hotter than the AMD, so you'll certainly be needing to run fans faster and hence louder than an AMD system to keep those temperatures down. The tests here all use 5200 MHz DDR5 memory, and it's currently rarer than gold dust, so you will have a slight performance here of between 5 to 10% with the 4800 MHz RAM that's currently available at the time of this video. 
You'll also be out of luck currently if you want more than 64 gigs of RAM, as there are currently no DDR5 32 gig sticks available, and Z690 spec is a maximum of four RAM slots. The onboard Iris Xe GPU on the Intels is more than respectable for DAW work, which tests similarly to a GTX 1030, and the costs for a 12900K uh, system work out just higher than the equivalent AMD 5950X system with a passive 1030 card. The Intel will work out slightly more expensive if you're adding more powerful discrete graphics card, though this is only necessary if you're doing more than just audio work. You might also want to think about saving some money and going for the cheaper Z690 boards with DDR4 memory. Whilst the DSP performance stays similar within a couple of percent, the virtual instrument performance under DDR4 is around a third worse, shown here on both the 12700K and the 12900K. So it's clear that the new memory makes a substantial difference. If you've got any other questions about audio PCs, performance or anything else, drop us a comment. Otherwise, we'll see you for another video again soon.